asked Vicky if she was on them. She said yes, and I let the Benelli eat. I just missed. I flat out missed. Hi, I'm Jim Zumbo, and you're watching The Choice, and it's my choice to hunt with a crossbow. The choice is about three things. Real hunting, going after the animal of your choosing with the weapon you love. Real adventure, from the mountains of Canada to the desert to Mexico. But most of all, it's about real people. Hunters with families, jobs, and dreams. Their skills will be put to the test. Every situation is different. Success or failure. It all comes down to the choice. That one's for you. Oh, yeah, baby! <laughs> Oh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, baby. Woo. Woo. Welcome to this week's choice. Well, we're still down in Florida, still hunting with Uncle Hop down at Oswald Outfitters. Yes, ma'am. That's where we're at. This week, we've got Freddy and the Jim Zumbo. One. Yes. And Mr. Jim Zumbo. That's right. And he's using a 10 point crossbow. Yeah. Freddy uses the Benelli. Yeah. And I'm just working on the Vinci. Italian made, you know, it's a good, it's a, it's a good gun. Oh my gosh, this week's Shotgun, lucky logo. Shotgun, baby, shotgun. This yes. week's lucky logo is Hunter Safety Systems. Yep, if you go in a tree stand and you're not wearing a Hunter Safety System, you're asking for trouble. You are, don't ever do that. Hey, so, but if you see that in the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. So let's yep. head into the show. I believe we've got Freddie up first for the first segment. And, and second. We'll see third how. Third and fourth. Yeah, Freddie. I was gonna say. Fre well, actually, we surprised Freddie though. Yeah, we did. You we sort of. He gave up his turkey hunt so Freddie could shoot an Osceola. So he never shot one before. Of course, so. he wanted to see how many times he could try to shoot at one. Oh, well, he wanted I'm to get sorry. his yeah. money's worth. <laughs> oh boy. We're down here in Central Florida with Osceola Outfitters, and uh, I thought I was gonna be filming this afternoon, but Ralph and Vicky surprised me, and Abby surprised me, and said. Uh, that they're gonna give me an opportunity to kill my first Osceola. So we're set up here and on uh, their way to the roost. They've been roosting in this cypress swamp here out in front of us. So we're set up here. We got an hour before, di uh, before dark. Let's see if we can't get a gobbler to come through. So after the initial excitement wore off, after I was told I was gonna be able to kill an Osceola, we got set up in a big clearing back on a cypress swamp on the south end of Hoppy's property. And we were set up there and we looked back and we saw Jake go through the very, very back of the clearing. And about 10 minutes after we saw that Jake, another bird stepped out into the clearing and it was obvious that it was much bigger than that Jake. He starts walking towards our decoy and we look up and at the back of the clearing out of the cypress, here come two big long beards about 50 yards behind him. See the two of them, Vicky. To the right of the decoy. Yeah, they're running in right now. They're drop kicking our decoys, strutting and gobbling right there all in front of us. And they see something that they don't quite like. I'm sure it was probably me trying to get back on them. They see something that they just don't dig and they start to walk off back towards where they came from. Well, finally the two birds split up and Hoppy goes, pick one and shoot. I see the bird is still on his feet, and then I said two more, boom, boom, as they go running down the back of the opening into the cypress swamp. I just blew it. That's what just happened. I've been hanging out with Vicky too much. <laughs> Oh, man. 
I just missed. I flat out missed. I missed. That's all I did. I missed. I blew it. Choked. So I don't know if they're still going to let me hunt or not after that display <laughs> of sorrow. <laughs> it's not the Benelli's fault. I promise you that. What's that say? A good, what's that saying? A good carpenter doesn't blame his tools, right? <laughs> <laughs> We were ready for the next morning, but the weather just didn't allow it. The Lord said that we were hunkered down for the day. We went back the next morning. We got back to where we, uh, to where we had started that the previous night before the rain, and uh, we heard some birds gobble. still in the roost here. He just gobbled a couple times. I'd say we're within 150 yards of him. We gotta get set up. It's getting daylight quick, so we're gonna set up here and see what happens. We were set up and we were ready and we heard him gobbling up on the roost and we heard him gobble when he hit the ground and we figured he was just right around the bed. 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes go by and the bird never appears, so we just drive on. We go to look for another bird. When we get back in the truck and we're driving, and uh, we come up to this burnt pasture on the back end of the property, and we see this bird out there strutting, and he's got hens all around him. We've been chasing this bird for the last hour. He's He's been all up and down this burn field. We chased him from one side to the other. He's over, just over this bank in front of us. Hoppy said it looks like he's coming this way. Come to find out that this bird's hens had left him for the day. They were going to sit on their nest. And this bird ended up on the exact opposite end of the field from where we thought he was going, trying to look for those hens. Well. We get set up and we're starting to walk back along the ditch bank. And we notice that the bird at this point is now turned around and he's starting to head back towards us. Laying in a prone position on the top of the bank, I got my Benelli leveled, ready to go and Hoppy starts fanning with his tail fan, and sure enough, this bird starts coming right towards us. That bird turns and starts walking right into the end of the barrel of my Benelli. All I know is that bird got to that fence post. I asked Vicki if she was on him. She said yes, and I let the Benelli eat. Yeah! Boom! Bang, baby! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir! Woo! Woo! Oh, yes! <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Sure, buddy. sure appreciate it. Sure appreciate it. <laughs> I'd say that's a, a fair, uh, fair recovery for the shot from the other night. Folded him. He just sat right down when don't it's. That <laughs> yeah, don't get that all right, <laughs> all right, all right, Back easy. Rouse turkey there. Moss <laughs> turkey, RJ. Yeah, Fine. No. But no. Get a mystery type all of right. You know whose he is now, don't you? <laughs> Big Mac, come home with me. <laughs>
Well, here he is, my first Osceola brother, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Sure appreciate the surprise from you and Ralph and Vic and just an awesome day. Great bird. Look at the hooks on him. That is just dandy. Great big old spurs on him. A great beard as well. We had a heck of a morning. We were up and down all morning long. 6.30 this morning, we were set up on a bird. We just didn't get him to work. And then we found this bird in a burnt a burnt out field that you guys yeah, have burned. Cow pasture that had been burnt. And uh, up and down we went, up and down we went. Three different setups on the edge of that one field we had till finally, Hoppy spotted this bird out in the field and pulled out his old trick, the tail fan, and got him coming to us. <laughs> uh, it was, worked out perfect. Worked out great. He come across the field, got right there across the, the canal, and Vicky said he was on him, and the old Benelli with some number sixes just rolled him. Didn't even hardly flop. Awesome. Yeah, great. It was just a, a great day. Again, Ralph and Vic, thanks so much for the awesome surprise. You, of course, for having me down. It's always a good time when we come down here and sure appreciate it. Another another awesome morning up here at Osceola Outfitters, brother man. Thank you again. You bet. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Unbelievable. Fred, he got Good job. Now, Way to go, buddy. Way to go. Now? Jimmy's coming into camp. Yep. Jim Zumbo is coming on in, so don't We're go gonna, anywhere because he's going to be up next. He's going to practice, I think, and get ready with the 10 point, and he's going to rock and roll. Then a couple jigs came in, came in really close. I mean, they were within 10 yards. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Go to facebook.com slash Ralph and Vicky. Hi, I'm Jim Zumbo, and you are watching The Choice. <laughs> I like this, man. Where have I been all my life? You know, I shot a crossbow, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago in Ohio on a deer hunt. I mean, I, I was using a crossbow. I never got a shot, so I've never taken anything with one. So this is going to be an all-new experience. And I can tell you, after having shot this thing a few times, I'm wondering why I waited so long. So this is, this is kind of exciting. The idea of taking a turkey or anything with a crossbow was really appealing because I'd never done that before. The 10 point bow was, was beautiful to shoot and I thought, man, where have I been? Why haven't I tried this before? I couldn't see where it hit. Dead on. Honestly? You, you don't, I, I believe you chopped the leaf on the target and you- You're kidding me. Nope. I gotta see this myself. That's amazing. That's the fifth time I've shot that crossbow and the first time I've shot a crossbow in 15 years probably. Wow, at any rate, I shot pretty well, I think. Freddie said I did, and I couldn't wait to go out the next morning and try for a turkey. We're hunting here with Osceola Outfitters. The folks here are good friends of Ralph and Vicky's. They've been here many times. Very high degree of success on Osceola's. So I am ready. We hadn't seen anything for a little while. In fact, probably an hour passed. We never heard one gobble that day. Then a couple jigs came in, came in really close. I mean, they were within 10 yards. Those two jigs had barely left. It wasn't within 10 minutes when all of a sudden here comes four more jigs in. So we watched them play around for a while and they walked off. So then we waited for the next phase of the hunt to, to come around.
The second mooring went to a blind that uh, Jimmy had already set up the day before, so all we had to do was get in there. We we're sitting there and some hens showed up. We heard some booming in the distance and we heard that there was some tornado warnings to the north of us, but we were gonna be safe for a while. There's some thunder in the distance, had a bad rain yesterday. And uh, we think it's gonna pass by to the north of us, so we should be okay. We're sitting there and all of a sudden these two long beards showed up. They come charging down the field and ran up to that decoy and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's gonna happen. Both birds to me looked like they were the same size. They were both good birds and I just raised a crossbow as, as, uh, as easily as I could. And here these two gobblers were Incredibly, the other gobbler stayed there. And not only did he stay there, but he attacked the decoy, knocked the head off of it. And he just stood around there and gobbled and gobbled and gobbled. Oh my gosh, look at that. No brotherly love there. I swear that gobbler stayed there for at least 30 minutes. And he must have gobbled 150, 200 times minimum. But it was a real display, but this was the number one quintessential finest turkey hunt I've ever been on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, was that cool? Uh, thank you, yeah, buddy. Thank you. That was something else. I'll tell you what. Is that Did cool? you get everything over oh, there? Oh, yeah, we got it all. Well, Jim, enjoyed it. Thank you, Hoppy, so Enjoyed much. I mean, it's, I'll tell you, it's just a phenomenal place you've got here. I'd recommend your outfit above any other I've ever hunted well, in Florida. I appreciate that. That's good. Good to know. And in fact, above any other I've hunted as far as <gasps> plum flat lots of turkeys. <laughs> Thank you too, buddy. Thank you, Jim. That was a great job. Can't wait to eat your, uh, your cream of shrimp. Oh, yeah, you're making dinner. Oh, yeah, dinner. I'm you're making dinner tonight, yeah. huh? I am? Oh, yeah. Really? Right Remember? Yeah. I think I'm going to just sit around crackle, and think about this bird all day. cookbook, you know what I mean? And <laughs> we're going to get into this. I can tell you one thing. I ain't seen the last of that crossbow. <laughs> I'm ready to go again. We got something for you, Jim. Okay. <laughs> now, that you've, now that you've killed your turkey. Now, now I'm the camp cook. <laughs> that away, Uncle Jim. Is that cool or what? Very cool. I think he's hooked. You know, there's another, there's a man that is definitely, he's his whole career has been about the choice. He didn't care what you shot. That's, Let's go hunting. That's right. And now I think he's hooked on that crossbow. Oh, yeah. That 10 point, I think he ended up going. We got one of the legends in the hunting industry hooked again. I think so. We, we want to thank everyone down at Osceola Outfitters, Uncle Hop, Susan, boys, Mr. Reed, Mr. All of you guys, so Mike, all of you down there. Everybody. So much for having us down there again. And it was a lot of fun. It again. was. It really it was. was. This week's Lucky Logo? Hunter Safety Systems. And that's here's right. the deal. If you're in a tree stand, if you're climbing, if you're hanging stands, if you're off the ground, there's no reason why you're not wearing a hunter safety system. Absolutely. We don't ever want to hear that you're not wearing one. No. Absolutely. Next week's show? Next week, yes. we are going to unbelievable all over the country yes. to try to cure SWD, yes. severe whitetail disorders, because we all got it. Really? Yes. Well, cool. You well, ready? Yeah. Well, thank the, you for making your choice. The choice. We'll see you next week. Time to rock and roll.